In the final video clip of this series, Russ McMillan talks about the applied maths principles behind targeting a missile. So if we take an example where submarines on the surface, you've got a point in the ground where you want the missile to reach, and you fire the missile from the submarine. So you fire it at a certain speed, and you fire it at a certain angle. What we want to be able to do, knowing just those two pieces of information, is work out where it's going to end up. If you simplify the problem, effectively the missile is seeing a downward acceleration caused by gravity, but it's not seeing any accelerations in horizontal direction. It's just been fired from the submarine at a speed, and it's assumed to stay at that speed except for the influence of gravity. So if, for the sake of argument, we take the speed to be 14 metres per second, and we take the angle here to be 45 degrees. The first thing I want to do is break down that speed into the speed it's travelling directly vertically and the speed it's travelling directly horizontally. We just do that like we'd normally do it through Pythagoras or sine and cos. So what we want to know is the horizontal speed and the vertical speed. This is 45 degrees. Whilst you could use sine and cos in this case because it's a relatively straightforward angle we can work, work out what it is. If you take a 45 degree triangle, distance of 1 on this side, distance of 1 on this side, Pythagoras 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared, uh, equals 2 sorry, square root that gives you the um, gives you the length of the hypotenuse. In this case, root 2, we can approximate to be 1.4. So what we effectively conclude from that is if, if the submarine is travelling 14 metres per second in that direction, then it's travelling 14 divided by root 2 upwards, which is 10 metres per second, 10 metres per second upwards, and it's also travelling 10 metres per second horizontally. So what determines the point at which it hits the ground? Effectively, the point at which it hits the ground is the point at which it, it, it will travel upwards, it will slow down, it will stop, and then it will start travelling downwards. And it's the point that it reaches the ground again that will determine where it lands. Now we have an equation for this, so the distance travelled is equal to the initial speed and we're talking the vertical direction, times the time it's travelling for, plus half of the acceleration, which in this case is gravity. Bear in mind that gravity is actually a negative, because we're assuming it's travelling upwards, gravity is acting downwards, times the time squared. So if we assume gravity to be minus 10, then what we want to do is find out at what point in time we get back to x as naught, which in this case is ground level. So we can solve for t, understanding that x is naught. So we say that x equals the initial velocity, which in this case we've already calculated to be 14 over root 2, which is equivalent to 10, times the time it's travelling for, plus, or plus a half times gravity, which is minus 10, times the time squared. Divide both sides by 5, and we get t equals 2 seconds. So we know now how long the missile is in the air. What we want to do is work out how far in the horizontal direction the missile has travelled in that time. The horizontal velocity stays the same throughout. So it's a simple equation of the distance in the horizontal direction is equal to the velocity, which again in this case is 14 over root 2, which is 10 metres per second, times 2 seconds, which is in this case 20 metres. Now clearly, in reality, these numbers would be much greater. 
So what we need to do is to get the missile to leave the submarine at a much greater speed to carry it much further through the air before it lands again. But the principles are exactly the same.